Now we get to the exciting bit, taking your boat along our wonderful waterways. A few basics. First of all, don't have any more people on board than your boat is designed to sleep and try to keep them spread out so that the boat isn't much deeper in the water on one side than the other. Make sure the steerer can reach the tiller and the engine controls easily and that everybody, including the steerer, is ahead of the tiller so they can't be swept overboard by it. Particularly important in locks. Please keep everybody off the roof, especially children, as it's not safe to travel there. The gunnels along the side of the boat are also potentially dangerous. When you decide to set off, start the engine, keep it in neutral and allow some time for it to warm up before you move off. Untie the front and back mooring ropes from the bank but leave them tied to the boat, coiled and ready for use. It's important that you make sure your ropes can't trail in the water and get caught around the propeller. And don't forget to stow the mooring stakes and the hammer if you've used them. Now the boat steers from the back and pivots around the centre point. So you can't just steer away from the bank as you would steer away from a parking space in a car. Instead push the boat away from the bank to get your propeller in deeper water. If it's really shallow, push the back of the boat out, then reverse for a bit before accelerating gently forward to cruising speed. The rule of the road on the canals is to drive on the right, but on most canals you'll steer down the middle and move over to the right when meeting another boat. Don't cut corners when going round bends as canals are often very shallow there. Now there is a four mile an hour speed limit right across the canal system, but a better gauge is to look back and ensure your boat isn't creating a breaking wave. If it is, slow down. And it's essential you always slow down when passing moored boats. Using a tiller to steer is simple as long as you remember that pushing to the right will make the boat head left and vice versa. Be a bit patient, plan ahead what you want to do as the boat will take a few seconds to respond. As we say, most boats pivot from a point about halfway along their length. That means you need to watch out for the front and the back of the boat. If you line up the front end only and then try to turn into a narrow gap, such as a bridge or lock for example, you risk hitting the side with the back of your boat. If you go aground, it's not a disaster. The routine is simple. Don't go forward, that just digs you in more deeply. Back away into deeper water and use the pole to push off. Always give yourself plenty of time to stop. Drop your speed and then drop into reverse gear using plenty of power to bring you to a halt. When you want to moor, you slow right down, come slowly into the side, either dropping a crew member as the bow reaches the bank or steering your stern into the bank to allow someone to get off the centre line from the stern. Lines are just ropes by another name, by the way. You need to tie your boat to the bank with a rope from both the front and the back. Use bollards or rings if they're there. Uh, if they're not, drive in mooring stakes. Put them in at a 45 degree angle and your rope should be at about a 45 degree angle from the boat. Loop them back onto the boat and tie securely, but not too tight. At a lock, boats going up and down usually take turns, so if it's not ready for you to enter and there's a boat coming the other way, let it go first as this saves water. Using a lock is simple. Going uphill, you moor your boat, empty the lock by lifting the paddles, open the gates, return to your boat, and steer it into the lock. You then close the gates and make sure all the paddles are closed at that end of the lock. Go to the other end and raise the ground paddles.
Go to the other end and raise the ground paddles, making sure you're not doing so too quickly. Watch your boat all the time. Only raise a gate paddle when the lock is half full. At all times keep an eye on what's happening to the boat in the lock and watch the crew member at the helm and any other crew members helping to operate the lock. Lean on the top lock gate beam until you feel it give and then open the gate. Steer the boat out of the lock, close the gate and close all the paddles. Now going downhill, you moor the boat, approach the lock, fill it by raising the paddles if it's empty, open the gate and then lower the paddles, return to your boat, steer it into the lock and close the gate behind it. Go to the other end of the lock and raise the paddles to empty the lock. Lean on the lock gate beams and open the gates when they give. Steer the boat out of the lock, close the gates and lower the paddles. It's important that you don't allow the boat to become trapped in the lock gates or hung up on a sill. Now the sill is an underwater shelf by the top gates of the lock and if you have the boat too close to the back gate when you're going down you may catch on it. Now that will tilt the boat, fill it with water and sink it. Sills are marked by white lines so keep well clear of them. It's also possible to get a bow or stern fenders trapped between or under gates when going up or down rocks so be very aware of them at all times. If anything does happen, close all paddles and stop the water flow as quickly as possible. And always enter and leave a lock slowly so bumps are less likely to cause damage. And you should always have a competent person on board while the boat's in a lock and stay alert. And when you're around the lock, watch out for unprotected drops around the lock side, especially when opening gates. But having said all of that, people have been using these locks for 250 years, so don't be afraid of them, uh, just stay alert. Above all, enjoy the experience of this historic canal system. You can cruise from dawn till dusk, but not after dark. So find a mooring while you still have plenty of light and you should uh, really cruise at least four hours a day to ensure the batteries are fully charged. Now if you are unfortunate enough to encounter high winds and storms, no problem, just moor up, sit them out in cosy comfort and then travel on a few hours later or the following day. Above all, have fun. <laughs>